hand cannon duel? Uh, they almost always would rather take the joust. Dude. Shoot your gun, bro. Come on. Ah, another one. Watch this shit. Hey guys, what's up? A lot of people have been asking for this one, so... This is my take and my spin on the Shade Binder, that is the Warlock Stasis subclass. This is my approach to it, my build, my thoughts. What exotics I run and the general play style. Let's uh, do the thingy. So to start off, we're gonna jump into the build, right? The abilities, the aspects, and the fragments. We'll get into the stats later and the mods later. Right off, you can run whatever rift you want. I like healing rift, some people like empowering rift. It really just depends on how you like to play. Whatever jump you want, obviously we only have one melee, and the grenade that I prefer is the cold snap. This is because you want to try to maximize your freeze up time as much as you can, because I, I don't feel like these two grenades sync very well with your aspects that you throw. And speaking about aspects, we have ice flare bolts and we've got frost bolts. If you're not sure what this does, whenever you get a freeze and you get a, a shatter, I believe, uh, it'll send chains out to other players or targets or whatever you would like to call it. Uh, you'll see why this is pretty important. Frost Pulse is just throwing the rift down. Uh, it throws out a freezing wave. This is just a nice little backup plan you can have. Since you probably are going to be throwing your rift a lot anyways, this is a nice thing to have. I don't really like the turret because I feel like you lose the extreme value in your grenade. So that's my opinion. Moving to the fragments here, I'm going to talk about four fragments. There is one that is optional and I reckon you could go wherever you want with it, but the other three are mandatory. Starting with the optional one, I say Whisper of Chains is pretty optional. I take it for the sole purpose of the recovery. That's all I really take it for. I mean, the passive's okay, but whatever. Whisper of Torment's absolutely imperative, especially if you're going to play this game properly. To the fact that you literally get grenade energy back and your entire basis of your class is built on spamming your grenade for freezes. Next up is fissures. You need fissures because almost all of your freezes are going to equate to a shatter and this is just free bonus damage if you get multi freezes or anything like that. And then you got whisper of bonds which is very 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 nice because again it all circles back into freezing and shattering. You def defeat a frozen target, get an orb of power, orb of power will funnel a lot, and you're gonna hear me use this maybe a few times, this phrase, funnel. What it typically means is you are gathering a charge and funneling it all towards one thing, hence the phrase funnel. That's a bit of an MMO phrase. Looking at our mod breakdown, we've got quite a simple mod breakdown over here. On the helmet, I like to build into Font of Wisdom and Solar Targeting. I have a Harmonic Siphon for a reason, you'll understand why. Obviously, sometimes you're not going to be able to have these two, but we'll get to that. The Font of Wisdom is for the sole purpose that Shadebinder Super is so strong, especially in trials where, you know, having the ability to like throw damage out. At, at any given time, especially when you have to duel wells over and over and over again, being able to get that super very, very fast is very nice. Especially since you are almost guaranteed to have a Font of Wisdom active with your the, being, uh, the ability to freeze up player, shatter them, and pick up an orb. It, it's kind of a no-brainer. Solar targeting is the sole purpose of two reasons. Number one, it gives you a little bit of accuracy on your shotgun on your second shot. I'm going to talk about that. And I like to use Igneous Hammer. You could realistically use whatever targeting you want. I use Harmonic Siphon because, again, I use Conditional Finality, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Moving on to the Gauntlet. I like to slot in all your good, nice, fun mods. These are, I would say these are kind of meta right now. I use Fastball because people, who doesn't like Fastball, right? Momentum Transfer is really nice. Nice? Nice. Because, I mean, every time you throw the nade, it hits the target. If it hits the target and you get melee back, right? And that's going to let you, you know, throw your melee and get your grenade back. So it really, again, we're looking at this recurring theme of chaining the freezes together and chaining the abilities so that they synergize with each other. Again, 
I would say to do this, some people would stack a little bit more heavily towards uh, impact induction, but do whatever you want. Moving into the chest piece mods, I just have two unflinching solar aims for the hand cannon. I use Igneous Hammer, so you could realistically throw whatever you want. I don't see much value in something like charged up because you really, you're not going to burn through charges like that. The boots is where it gets a little bit more important. Because we're being able to generate orbs at such a rapid pace, we want to really have the full like HP, give me HP button on the um on the orbs. So I use better already, recuperation, and solar holster, which is absolutely imperative if you're gonna use conditional finality, and I'll talk about why. If you don't know how this works, we'll talk about that in a second. Going to the class item. I like to run distribution because why not, right? You're gonna rift. You're probably try gonna try to catch people with your rift, right? You're gonna try to freeze trap them. I use Reaper because again, we're talking about throwing our abilities together, generating auras, keeping our font of wisdom, things like that. This is a no-brainer. This is a no-brainer of a pick. And of course, bomber because well, more grenades, more freezes, more abilities, right? Higher ability uptime. As far as your stat distribution goes. I like to, number one, focus my number one priority is always going to be on recovery since that's your class stat. And more rifts, more freezes, more, you know, reaper. It's just a good pick. Second up is at least six resilience so you don't get wrecked by Thorn. Thorn's extremely dominant right now, so definitely something you want to look out for. Uh, six is a, a res gate, I believe, for getting two crit one bodied, or maybe two crit by the remnant. I'm not 100% sure, I just know that this is what you want. There are much, much more educated people, so maybe watch a video on that. I, I think that the numbers have shifted around since I made my video like four years ago, but whatever. And I like to have at least five in discipline and strength. This is not necessarily what I would say priority is, but whatever. I like to have these two balanced out and at least seven int. The reason is because we're really abusing how fast Shade Miner gets its super. On top of having Font of Wisdom, it's gonna put you at 100 int pretty much for getting a kill after putting a rift down, right? Just something to consider. And mobility, I kinda don't care. If I had to give you a list of stats to prioritize, like to hit these uh, breakpoints, it would be recovery, resilience, int. And then the other ones are just whatever path you like. I would probably say maybe put a little bit more towards discipline than melee, but it's entirely up to you. If we want to start talking about our weapon loadout, this is where I'm going to argue for conditional finality. Now you're going to say, well, of course I would use conditional finality. It's the best fucking gun in the game. Well, I mean, yes, but let's talk about conditional finality and why it's a special snowflake when it comes to stasis. So if you hit every single pellet, again, it's a stasis pellet. If you hit every single pellet, it's gonna freeze that target and shatter it. You know what that, how that chains into? With ice flare bolts. This enables you to potentially get triple kills, if not more, with a single shotgun kill, right? And these are frozen targets that you can shoot, you can melee and they shatter. Pretty damn strong. So now that's your first shot, your second shot, is gonna be the solar shot, which, you know, causes people to ignite. Now let's talk about it. I put a pin in something earlier, and that was our uh, holster mod, our solar holster mod. If you have more than one shot in reserve, so like let's say you have one shot loaded into the shotgun, which is your solar shot, and you have like four extra shots that you've picked up off the ground, this will automatically load a stasis shot into it. As far as your energy pick, it really just depends on what you feel like running. You could run something with Wellspring to really, really pump up those ability up times, but I don't really find that it's super necessary. I like Igneous Hammer with it because, I mean, it's a good hand. It's like a damn good hand cannon. It does the job, right? And there is an argument case, and I've talked about this with some of my, uh, some of my subscribers and, you know, viewers and friends, stuff like that. On the case of Wellspring being useful, and should you actively seek out Wellspring? And my thought process on this was really simple. It's kind of an Occam's Razor if you think about it. Because, and it also Attrition Orbs falls under this as well. Because, 
you could have this crazy, goofy build where you're getting a ton of kills and wellsprings popping off and you're spamming nades and midways all over the place. Or you could just have a tool that you shoot them in the head and they fall over, right? It's like, why... My thought process on it is, why would I build this long, grand scheme of a plan that's never gonna work for good players, right? Where... I could just shoot them in the head three times instead of like building up this, you know, long chain of, and then, you know, where I throw a cold snap and melee. You know, it's just never gonna happen like that. That's so unrealistic. Like, I think for 6v6, that case is super arguable. But for something like 3v3, that's just never gonna happen, dude. That is literally never gonna happen. So, my take on it is just use whatever the hell you think is cool as long as you can spam conditional finality. Thumbs up. Another thing to mention that's quite important in my opinion is the fact that Shadebinder has access to staff canceling. If you don't know what this is, uh, you may have heard it under the name of snap skating, snap canceling, whatever you want to know it as. Uh, slide canceling is another one. It works exactly the same way. There's nothing really different about it. And if you don't know how to do this, it's actually quite simple. You begin a slide, you use your super button without a charged super this will make the ability melee sound but will not use your ability melee charge and you can do whatever you want thereafter you can do a glide out of it you can jump to a glide whatever you want to do it for some reason or another just interrupts your state of sliding and you can do whatever you want if you're someone who likes to overthink or overcomplicate your gameplay a little bit too much and you're kind of curious about the approach to how you would play in the playstyle. There's a couple of strengths and weaknesses that I would recommend one to review and then evaluate that into how you would like to approach abusing those strengths. Now, the number one strength is the fact that you have with one button the ability to shut out an entire play, depending on how you utilize that button, right? You can freeze a push and completely shut a push out. You can freeze a super capitalize on that freeze with your conditional finality and just completely shut that super out. This goes for bubbles, this goes for wells, this goes for roaming supers, it truly has no limit. This is suffice to say that conditional finality will likely be nerfed in the future. Uh, I think that it's a great shotgun, I don't think that it's overpowered, some people disagree. You're allowed to have your grievances, it's fine, whatever, I kinda don't care. The second is, the super is super damn strong. Not necessarily tanky, we're not talking release behemoth, but it has the ability, at, once again, to shut out virtually any play, granted you utilize it properly. The downside is it's a very predictable super, and it's very easy to shoot it in the head, the IMO. If you give someone a window longer than about three seconds with a sniper, you're probably on the floor in the respawn screen. Something else to consider, just because you get a freeze doesn't mean you necessarily have to convert on it. Sometimes getting a freeze or a slow or anything like that is more than enough to kind of kind of push the enemy away. Or even set your teammates up to clean it up. For example, let's say that you get like a staff freeze or something on a guy who's swinging at you. And you know you're not going to make that timing. You know you're, there's no fucking universe where you meet that timing and get that melee or get that shatter. Bro, just run the other direction. Right? He's frozen for a good half second, you know, by the time you realize. Just get on out of there. Nine times out of ten, you have a teammate that's probably going to have an advantage anyways, and they're just going to shatter or clean it up or anything. The same thing goes for the staff. If you know that you've got more stuff to deal with, let's say you get a freeze on a guy who's at, like, you know, ten, ten meters away with your super, and you're like, oh man, I could go get that shatter, but there's a guy with a bastion about to blast my shit down in about two seconds. You know, it might be better for you instead of, you know, uh, throwing your pulse out to just catch him with the staff, you know? Let your teammates deal, you know, have faith in your teammates to deal with the shatter. Granted that, you know, that's the circumstantial, you know, thing to kind of follow up on, but just something to consider. You don't always have to follow up on a freeze that you get, no matter how greedy you want to get about it. And now, I want to talk about what exotics and how you would approach using those. There are two that come to mind immediately. Osmiomancy Gloves or Transversive Steps. Quite frankly, I think Osmiomancy Gloves are a, a no-brainer. 
but I understand that transversus steps are a little bit like fucking heroin in the sense that once you get hooked on them, like, it's real hard to get off of that extra slide and speed. Uh, and that's pretty legit. That's a pretty legit John. Uh, I give you credit for that. Osmia Mancy, in my opinion, is a superior pick because you you just buff the whole theory behind the like the, behind the build, right? Behind the the subclass is looping your freezes. Osmia Mancy gives you stronger freezes, an extra charge to abuse, and it gives you better cooldown reduction whenever you actually get a freeze with the grenade. So it's really hard to argue against that. However, there are some people who prefer to snipe. They like to pull up that sniper, and they need to meet those choke points. Chaining that with the staff canceling and just the increased speed of transverses steps and also having the displacement ability of things like cold snap and staff, it's real hard to argue against transverses steps as well for 3v3. However, I ultimately feels like I feel like it comes down to preference and that's something that you should consider to yourself as a player. I am not really someone who likes T-steps very much. I like them in PvE because fast boy fast, but I think Osmiomancy gauntlets, the gloves, whatever they're called, are... That's the move. That's what I've been using. Cami did something with Bellador's Wrath Weavers. I think that that's a little bit, like, you know, a little too Harlem Globetrotter for me, but... Just things to consider. I reckon this is about as detailed as I can get on this build without literally playing the game for you. I, I know that as soon as I upload this and this, you know, a week later, I'm gonna be like, oh man, I should have, you know, put that in, but whatever, I mean, that's how all these videos go for me. By the way, I hope this sounds like fun, I hope you can find some fun doing this. I, I really enjoy it since, you know, Stormcaller's in the grave right now. Uh, it really does let me kind of put a middle finger up to a lot of the, like, crazy overpowered, like, fuck you buttons that are in the game to have uh, quite a lot of counter potential to those fuck you buttons. So, that's why I like it, and I feel like I wanted to share this. Uh, either way, that's all I have. Uh, see you later.